What we're starting air testing out with is this, an uncoated piece of ballistic AR-600 steel. Now, I want to stress one more time, we will never, ever, ever sell you an uncoated piece of steel. But this is going to be our gross analog for the test. What we have here is printer paper or cardstock paper that is ready to go to catch the frag on the outside. To start, we're going to just take a single shot with a green tip out of a 18 inch AR-15. We're going to strike it as close to center as possible and see that splash. We're going to see all of that frag go around and what the internet is so quick to say is going to kill you with a coated piece of steel inside of carrier. But we'll get to that. For now, we're just gonna take our analog shot on this uncoated piece of steel, duct taped to the actual dummy. Green tip, here we go. Get started, first shot. In no carrier, I hit lower right, not necessarily center, but what we have here, play impact, and we've got frag coming all the way around, pretty much in a full 360 of the plate impact. That was to be expected. It is uncoated steel getting shot with a green tip, which is a steel core penetrator inside of that copper jacket, and it just went everywhere. That is to be expected. Primary reason why you wouldn't duct tape an uncoated steel plate to your chest. Think about that the next time you watch one of those videos on YouTube where that's how they test the validity of steel. Anyways, moving on, that was our control. Now we're going to move on to a coated piece of steel, then duct taped to the dummy itself to see how many rounds that will take. Test one was obvious. Now for control test two. What we're testing here is how many rounds it's gonna take the fragmentation coating to actually separate and allow frag to come through. So we reset, brand new paper, new plate, set up, we taped it a little bit better. Hopefully it'll hold to the dummy and we don't have to reset as many times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put as many rounds as it takes before we start seeing frag coming through. Let's get to it. Okay, test two with the coated plate, green tip again. This is gonna take a little bit longer because we're gonna have to go back and forth every time and check each hit. But let's get started. Shot one. Oh. Going hot. So what we have here is our first round impact and lo and behold, zero fragmentation has exited the fragmentation coating. Went in, dispersed, and caught it all with inside of this. There is nothing around here and we are good to go. Time for shot two. Shot two. So we had first impact here and second impact right here. Once again, zero fragmentation around the sides. On to three. Shot three. Going hot. No frag. Do have a little bit of that coating though coming out. A little bit of the permeable coating. So this is a cool part to look at. The fragmentation coating, while on the outside is completely cured and solid, on the inside, it is still slightly permeable. So when this was shot, a little bit of that semi-permeable fragmentation coating has actually come out a little bit, but it's just like a little sticky resin. Shot number four. Shot number four, the frag coating is still completely intact and there is no fragmentation anywhere to be seen. So let's move on to shot number five. Number five. Frag coating edges are good. Five impacted right above number four here. So that's our impact spot. Number six. Fragmentation coating, good. We've got zero splits. We've got no frag. A little bit of that semi-permeable coating that's coming out, but that's just essentially like little bits of polyurea or rubber. And shot number six right here. Just wanna throw something out here right in the middle. Uh, we have six shots so far impacted into the steel, kind of off to the edges just a little bit. I'll try and get some more off to the edges. The site isn't exactly zeroed for about 10, 15 meters, so I'm doing my best. But we still have six shots into the plate. And I just wanna throw out here at this point, if you've taken six rounds to your plate, things are going bad for you. Still, 
no exit of penetration, no fragmentation coming out. Six rounds to the plate, you're in a bad place, get out of there. Still shooting the greenest of tip, and now on to shot number seven. We are good. Just still a little bit of that perme permeable inside coming out a little bit, but nothing even to worry about because that is nothing sharp, is nothing searing hot. It isn't anything that could potentially harm you. Just make your fingers a little sticky and uncomfortable, but inside of a plate carrier, you wouldn't have to worry about that. And it's all seemed to kind of just fall downwards and nothing really side to side or up towards the top here. So let me mark this and we'll keep going. Shot number eight. Number eight, right here in the high chest. And again, no splitting of the actual fragmentation coating. All right, let's mark it and keep moving forward. Moving on, shot number nine. Shot number nine, right here. And we're gonna go ahead and take the plate off and show you that there's been no penetration through the backside. As we can see here, there is no penetration on the backside of this plate. Here are all the shots that we've taken so far and no frag has exited outside of the plate itself. And this is with no carrier on. Fragmentation coating is still good. There's no cracks, no breaks anywhere along the coating. Numero diez. That's 10 in Spanish, in case you didn't know. Learn something new every day. Clear. Impact number 10. Nothing on the outside. No frag coming out anywhere around here. No frag up top. Yeah, we're starting to get a little puff out of the actual coating itself. Right in this area where I'm starting to land most of my shots, you see the coating starting to move out a little bit. That is due to the frag getting caught in there, the excess metal, lead, and steel. Also, the coating actually starting to separate from the metal itself. So, right here is where that impact hit on number 10. We've just passed round number 10 to the plate itself with no frag coming out around. Now, if you've taken 10 rounds to your plate that you've duct taped onto your chest, don't go play the lottery. You've used up all of the luck that you have for everyone on the planet. On to number 11. So we saw some spark, and here we have our first penetration. Well, not penetration, separation of the coating itself. Let me go ahead and remove, and we'll take a look. Separation of the coating right down here on the lower right hand side. Impact was directly on this corner edge. Now, NIJ standards is within about an inch and a half to two inches of the edge, but we impacted right here and shot out the side with some fragmentation. This is on shot 11, and we have a little bit of frag coming out here on the bottom side. We see some over here. We see a little bit on the back side here, a little bit penetrating through, and a little chunk right there. So we've only had a break on the lower right. Let's go ahead and keep shooting this. I'll try and get some more around the edges and see if we can get some more separation. 11 impacted directly here on the very corner edge of the right hand side of the plate. Now I would like to emphasize that even with a ceramic plate, a shot right here is most likely going to pin or divert off. Clear. Okie dokie, my friend. So we are on shot number 13. Let's see if we can get some. Shot number 14. Shot number 15. Shot number 16. 
There we go. So we had a slight separation on the left-hand side of the plate now due to the impact right here. That little guy right there. So that's shot number 16. And we got separation off of the right-hand side. Let me go ahead and cut it out and we'll take a peek. No penetration of the plate whatsoever. 16 went right here. And if you can see that, we got separation of the coating right there. Do that far corner shot. No frag up towards the throat. I think it's just a little bit of fallings from the side here, but we do have a little bit of frag off to the side. Just a little bit off to this angle here, nothing off to the left. Okay, let's retape and keep going. Okay, so we have gotten a separation of the frag coating off of the right lower corner and the left high shoulder corner. I'm gonna go ahead and forego the single shot approach now, since we have shown that around those round points in that spot, it is going to separate. I will be here all day if we're shooting one at a time, so I'm gonna go ahead and up the round count a little bit. That was shot 16, so we're gonna do 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I was homeschooled, I can't count without my fingers. Going hot. Going not. For those who can't count, like me, we are now going to shot 22. No more splitting of the coating. Just bubbling out a little bit. No frag coming back towards us. None out to the sides, none up to the top. Just what that little bit was off on that right hand side. Okay, let's do five more and see where we get to. Who knows? Five more, this will be shot 27. I stopped short because I saw that we had an escape. I saw the sparks from the steel penetrator in the green tip. So let's go take a look. Still, no penetration of the backside, just to show you. And there we go. Now we have our first, first big split caused from shooting the center of the plate itself down here at the bottom. That was at round 26 of shooting within that specified zone that the NIJ gives us. And if I had to take a guess, it was probably this shot right here. It is pretty remarkable if you ask me. 26 rounds to the plate, two off the corner, that's sprayed out, and then finally down here, that split. Finally, I'm ready to move on to the next test. Let's get that going. Now onto the fun portion of this test. What we are doing is we have taken an uncoated steel plate and we have put it in the carrier itself. Now we're going to see how many rounds the carrier will take before fragmentation will come out of that. So we've got the carrier all set up, plate, uncoated plate in it. We're using the back side and then we will use the front side on the next one. So let's get to work, let's do it. We're going to continue to shoot it until we see penetration. Okay, same deal. Green tip, 18 inch barrel AR. We're gonna start off one shot at a time. This is our first shot. Clear. All right, first shot. We definitely saw some sparks come out due to that steel core penetrator. So let's see what actually came through and where it came through at. All right, so we have a complete separation. This is pretty gnarly. There's a complete separation right here on the back side of the carrier. Just blew out the actual stitching. But what's cool to know is it tore out the bottom here a little bit. None of it went up. The impact was right here. It impacted right here, went in, 
and it all kind of shot down. Looks like nothing really came out the top side. So what you just saw was an uncoated piece of steel inside of a carrier. We've already showed firsthand with our control why you never want to run uncoated steel. But now let's go ahead and put the coated piece of steel in here inside the carrier and let's see how many rounds that will take before we start getting separation of the carrier itself. We know it's gonna be a fair amount of rounds, so let's go ahead and put that coated piece in inside the carrier and let's see what happens. Now onto the coated on the inside of the plate carrier. I have high hopes. First shot. First shot, center mass. You can still see the smoke coming out of it here. Nothing around the sides. We've been over this. We did it with just the duct tape. We know approximately how many rounds it's gonna take that center mass point to start letting out frag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna speed up the process a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and try and drop a couple rounds onto the side to see if we can get some coming out, as well as I'm gonna put multiple rounds into the center to see how long it takes before it actually comes out of the carrier itself. So let's get to it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put 10 right now into that center cavity. From there, then we'll start working edge shots and see how long it takes. Well, partner, you're still lucky. You're still hanging in there. 10 shots, well now 11, into the carrier itself, and we have zero penetration of any fragmentation coming outside of the carrier. That's to be expected. We just did this with the other test. We're at shot number 11. We're gonna put five more into that center mass and see what happens. That will bring us up to round 16. Nothing off of the sides here. We'll just go ahead and pull this off. a good look at it in the hands. We have what appears to be no penetration. Penetration being on the outside that I'm talking about, fragmentation ripping through the outside of the carrier. We do have a small little tuft of the fabric pushing out, probably from that low shot. Let's open it up and see what we got. No penetration of the back side of the plate. It's starting to get very warm from all those rounds. And what we're seeing is the same amount of separation or bulging from those spots. It's not like it's letting anything else through. Just finished shot number 16 to the center cavity. Let's keep going. We're gonna go ahead and put, let's do five more. Five's a good number. I like that number. Still no fragmentation up on the throat. Nothing off to the sides. No penetration of the backside. Still nothing is going through the side of the carrier. Nothing on the bottom here. It's still holding in. No fragmentation has exited anywhere on this carrier. 10 rounds, here we go. If we get any separation before that, we're going to stop and mark that number. Here we go. We are now at 31 shots because we had that initial shot, right? We're somewhere in there. Line, Th 31. We are now at 31 shots and we have bulging, but we only have that one point of separation here at the bottom. So, all sides, oh, looks like we're getting a little separation here on the left side of the plate as well, starting to finally separate from all those rounds. Side, bottom, nothing at the top and nothing on the right hand side. We're gonna do one more test. We're gonna put it back in. I'm gonna try and land some shots up here and off to the side. 
I'm gonna take one shot for here and one shot for here, and then we will see what happens. We are now on round 32 and 33. We have slight separation on the left-hand side and the bottom of the frag mitigation coating. There is a little bit of frag that seeped out the bottom side of the plate carrier itself, nothing off the left-hand side. Okay, so we had impact right here off of the right side. So that's pretty far off the plate. I'm not seeing anything coming through. And then I think I may have just center drilled that high shot. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna reset real quick. I'm gonna take one more shot. I'm gonna really try and get it up here in this high spot. But note that my last shot was right here. So we're gonna go ahead and just reset that one last shot. I'm gonna try and land it on that zipper if I can. The reset shot to that high chest area, I'm gonna try and hit as high as I can. All right, that's a bit better. Now we see the smoke coming out. Impact was high right through this Velcro. No fragmentation coming through the top, nothing on the backside, nothing through him, no frag up here. Last impact was right up here and the side impact was right here. We have no separation of the top and still those two separation points, but no separation on the side. But we do have a fair amount, not too bad, of frag and lead held in by the carrier itself. Probably what's going on is every time that this plate is impacted, it's jiggling a little bit out in the bottom here. Yeah, every time I give it a smack, it drops a little bit out of the bottom. So let's do one more reset. Let me try and get it right on those edges. Okay, this will be shot 35 and 36. I'm gonna try and do the same thing, high chest and off to our left, right side of the plate. Good impact. Nothing's tearing through the top. Nothing is tearing through the sides. No penetration of the back side of the plate. Everything's held in. We have this separation right here of the frag coating itself, but nothing on the edges. So it's impacting and it's coming out this way rather than going up and diverting. Same thing on the right. There is nothing on that side of the plate. One more, I guess, let's do it. 37, 38, same thing, high and right. Clear. We got some sparks, but I think that might just be because I'm a terrible shot and missed the dummy altogether, we'll find out. And that would be the case. I missed and hit off to the side and hit the steel backer. So, Let's go ahead and reset and take shot 38 one more time. Shot 38, second time. Hopefully I won't miss because I am trying not to suck. That looked more like it. Nothing's out the sides yet. So we still have this large separation and that's probably what's gonna keep happening here is if I keep hitting up at the top, it's most likely going to redivert to that empty point rather than coming out of the actual sides. And from here, it looks like it's just building up its own pocket like it did in the center. So we have successfully put 38 rounds through this. And I'm not going to downplay the potential lethality of frag, not at all. But what I am going to say is within the NIJ specified zone, as well as some of the lower shots that happened on this specific plate, it held all the frag in. If you've been shot 38 times, it's time to reevaluate your life decisions and we're gonna do a little mag dump. Let's get this thing to go, finally. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a little mag dump until it separates, because at that point there's no need other than my own personal enjoyment. So let's get to it. I believe the last round we shot was 38 or 39. I believe it's 38. Let's get going.
Okie dokie. Fun fact, there's still no fragmentation up into the throat. That's pretty neat. Let's check out the rest of this here though. We do have exiting off of the left-hand side where it was already previously split and more down at the bottom here. So those points that already had given out, let out more. Looks like we got a fair amount on the bottom here. That looks like some frag that could give you a little nick or two for sure. So what we have there is that split and to show the other sides. So this is the right side of the plate carrier. This is the top of the carrier. This is that left side, which just started splitting and the bottom, which just split more. Oh, this is neat. So let's look at this. We have all of the sides starting to split. We have the plate itself starting to split on the top, really starting to separate on the sides and the bottom. And finally, we're getting separation on this right side as well. But what's cool is we just started getting that separation here at the top. And yet there is no frag exiting out of the top of the carrier itself. So we have separation, but we don't have any penetration towards the top of that throat and no penetration of the back as well. If you can see here, I'm peeling back the frag coating itself. And even though it's separating from the plate, it's still stuck on pretty well in the parts that it hasn't burst out with the fragmentation. And if you can see that on the inside, all that torn up is where that frag is actually going out and getting caught in there. Now, I'm probably getting some sort of cancer by handling this, but it's for science, it's for you. For the final test here, I figure I'll put my money where my mouth is and really show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm gonna take some edge shots with a SRT Plus plate. So this is ultra high weight molecular polyethylene and a ceramic strike face, so it can take the green tip. But I'm gonna do an edge shot and show you that we still will get some sort of penetration and frag off of that as well. So we're gonna put this in the same type of vest. This one just has a camo pattern to it and we're gonna shoot it and step by step, I'll show you along the way. Okay, same deal, green tip out of an 18 inch barrel. Let's go ahead and try and get those edge shots like I was talking about. First shot on the edge, entered here and bulged out the side. Now, I'm not sure if the bullet is still in here or not, so I'll need to cut open a little bit and kind of see. It looks like it trapped it, but can't be for certain. Well, there's nothing exiting the carrier, so let's go ahead and take another shot. But again, first shot. Okay. Shot two, we're gonna go ahead and go for, let's go for the high chest. Doesn't look like any pen. As we can see, shot entered right here, right below that two inch zone and nothing escaped. Now let's go ahead and do some more on the sides and then I'm gonna do a little mag dump to the center and we'll see what happens. Shot number three. So we had penetration but we'll see if that was just poor shot placement on my part, or if that was the plate giving out on the edge. Hit really far on the edge. So I don't wanna call that a complete plate failure, even though the edge shot still went through and we had penetration into the dummy. But that is to show if you got hit in the edge of the plate, something like that can and will happen. Now, if it's a little bit more inwards, like this one was, this one is about a half inch, this one is about a quarter inch. So, things to consider with ceramic. Now, let me go ahead and give you a tight grouping in the middle here, like we had with the steel, and see what happens. Okay, so now again, granted, I know, 
ceramic, and the ultra-high weight molecular polyethylene degrade once it gets shot. I'm not saying this is an apples to apples comparison. But what we're gonna do now is I've got about 10 rounds loaded and I'm gonna put it in that eight by 10 zone that the NIJ specifies. We're gonna see what happens once it gets to that round count. I'm gonna try and shoot it around that zone as much as possible and not try and keep it in one spot. So, let's examine here what happened. As we pull out the plate, we can see that we got a couple of penetrations here. One, I think this one hasn't even fully gone through yet, but we had a full penetration here. Looks like a full penetration here as well. This one, I believe, is just a partial penetration, and I could probably dig out the rest of that bullet from it. But the point of this is showing that each plate has its ups and its downs, as well as showing you how it can actually slip out of the side if you were to get shot in the actual side of the plate wearing ceramic. Whereas steel, it will deflect more off. This could potentially still squeeze its way through. Again, not a straight through shot as we see here, it still captured it and pushed it off to the side, but it's food for thought when thinking about your choice between steel or ceramic plates. I wanna throw one last thing in here. Now this ceramic plate has been shot a total of 13 times now. This plate is done for. The steel plate, on the other hand, if it had taken these shots, it's not necessarily done. I do not suggest, and I am not suggesting, using a plate that has been shot. I am not saying that. What I'm saying is, the steel plate that has taken this many rounds, especially to the center zone, that eight by 10, technically is still capable of stopping those rounds effectively. Now, what happens past the frag and things of that nature, we would need to do much more testing and still never going to suggest to use a shot plate. Just throwing out the data that we have come to in this test today. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you and you're a true trooper. If you've skipped to this point to really find out the conclusions, that's okay too, I understand, it's a long video. But here's the deal. I wanna talk about this and I feel the necessity to discuss this, especially after all the testing that we have done here with the steel and the ceramic. I want to emphasize the importance of choice and the importance of what each one brings. The goal of these tests were to provide more information on steel armor, to hopefully dispel some of the myths that are surrounding steel armor, that if you are just to wear a properly made steel plate, that's very important. Because as mentioned, there are some companies that will sell you an uncoated steel plate or a steel plate that does not have a proper fragmentation mitigation coating. Those companies, I believe, are doing something that is not necessarily morally right. But unfortunately, that is the case. So let's talk about this here. The steel is going to be heavier. It's going to have true edge-to-edge -edge protection, meaning all the way out to the sides. It will truly stop that bullet. You have more chances of fragmentation. The frag mitigation coating, hopefully, has shown you here today that it is perfectly capable of stopping a multitude of rounds and continuously capturing it in. You always have the option to get a frag sleeve, an extra Kevlar sleeve that you put your plate in. So if something were to hit here and spray fragmentation out, it would aid in capturing it as well as your plate carrier itself. I plan on running more testings where I see if some duct tape will stop it and that will be in the future. I just mentioned some pros and some cons about steel. Ceramic, there are pros and cons to as well. Ceramic and composite plates are going to be lighter. They're gonna be a bit more expensive, but it's going to give you more of a multi-curve fit. It's gonna be more comfortable, it's gonna be lighter, you'll probably wear it more often. It has almost zero propensity for frag, of fragmentation of the bullet coming out and causing harm. It's most likely going to capture all of that. There's still a possibility for a little bit of frag of the actual ceramic material, 
as I've shown with this plate, it is multi-hit capable. It can take a fair amount of hits before you start seeing a penetration. That's where the trade-off is with the steel and the ceramic. For the rounds they're rated for, the steel can go all day. It can pretty much take the hits all day long, more than would realistically happen. Ceramic, well, like I showed, is multi-hit capable. After one shot, it is technically donezo. It is degraded and it's gotta be replaced. The choice is yours. Do what's right for you. Do what's best for you. Do your proper research. And if you like the idea of steel, but it's just still a little too scary, maybe get that fragmentation sleeve on top of this fragmentation coating, or just get ceramic. Both are fantastic options and both should serve you well. It's up to you, do your research, be smart, know the pros and cons, and also don't spread misinformation. That's silly, don't be a silly goose.